um, recording. Okay, um, did you see or the, did you watch the class or last class? Uh, no, I still haven't watched it, but I checked the material you sent. Yeah, because last class we were working with uh, uh, polite requests, okay? Uh, I made like a, a plan in there in order to, when, when you ask for something in a polite way, you have different ways of doing it, okay? Uh, of course, you have modal can, modal could, will, and would. Sometimes it's kind of funny because you say, how can you ask? A question we will okay for the present yeah that's the way it is okay for example uh, just uh, inverting the the order in there you have kind of a question asking poli politely in order to um, to uh, open the window I think it is no close the window and can you see it Yes, I can see it. Okay, read the, the possibilities. With can, with uh, would, will, no, with can, could, will, and would. How would you do it? Can you please close the window? Or could you please close the window? Or will you please close the window? Or would you please close the window? Okay, the, well, we know that can, could, and would, and normally you can do it as a question, but will, for the present is kind of strange, okay? But you can do it anyway. Um, will you please, and you can add or omit the please, because in order to make it more polite, you can use, or you can add the please, okay? So you can say, can you please, would you please, could you please, and will you please close that window? One thing that you have to remember is whenever you use a modal verb, all these are modals, okay? You have to use the verb in the infinitive. Okay, that is very important. Okay, this is the thing that you have to be aware. For that reason, I put it on, put it in red. Okay, whenever you use this in a simple way, you have to use the verb in the infinitive. You can never use a modal with a verb conjugated, except in other situations. But this is the one that we were doing. Now, the second thing is in here with would you mind? It's another expression. The, it's very polite too. And uh, the difference with would you mind and the others, and that when you, use, when you use would you mind, you have to use the verb in the, with ing. Would you mind closing that window? It's very cold in here, okay? So you have with modals, like in here, verb in the infinitive. Would you mind with ing? Okay, but it's the same way. And then, do you mind? In the case of do you mind, you can use it with ing if it is alone. Do you mind closing the window? Or you can use it as a, as a um, clause. Do you mind if I? Do you mind if I close the window? In that case, you use it in the infinitive. Okay, then the other possibility is. Also, like, a, like a, a clause, is it okay if I close the window? In those cases, when you use it in, as a clause in here, in the present, you have to use it with the verb in the infinitive. And the last way is with a clause, but the second clause, the second conditional, yeah? In this case, you have to use the verb in the past. Would it be all right? Would it be all right if I closed that window, yeah? Would it be all right if I closed that window? Okay, so these are the, all the possibilities that you have in order to ask a question, okay? Or, I mean, to ask for something in a polite way. Could you, will you, would you, uh, can you, with a, verb the, with a verb in the infinitive? For example, if I need a, a pen, and uh, you have a pen, I don't have a pen, so I say, could I borrow your pen? Your pen? Can I borrow your pen? Will I borrow? Will I borrow your pen? Etc. Okay, that's another. That's way. But also, you can use the other possibility. Is it all right if I borrow your pen? Is it okay if I borrow your pen? 
Now you can use it with lend also, for example. Uh, would you mind lending me your pen? In that case, you have to use it with ing. Or would it be okay if I borrowed your pen? Okay, that's kind of the idea of these polite requests. Uh, is it clear for you or not? Yes, I understood. Yeah, so the only thing that is that you have to remember that there are different ways to, to do it. And some ways you have to use infinitive and some others you have to use ing or ed. Okay, um, I gave you um, some exercises that we're going to do now. Okay, oops, I always make the same mistake. I have to share the screen now. Okay, let's do the exercises that I think uh, it will help. Okay, uh, and here I have question with could. Yeah, this is very simple. Okay, it says here, um, could you request, I'm going to the supermarket, could you please buy some milk? Sure, no problem. Okay. In there, I'm going to Starbucks. Could you please get me a cup of coffee? Sure, no problem. Now, I'm going to the library. What can you ask me from the library, uh, Kimberly? Uh, for a book? Yeah, so? Um... Could you please bring me a book? Yeah, okay. Use can. Um, can you please uh, bring me a book? Okay, use will. Will you please bring me a book? All right. Now, uh, would you mind? Um, would you mind bringing me a book? Yeah, would you mind bringing me a book? All right, that's okay. Now, uh, for example, return. Use any. Mm, with the verb return? Yeah, with the verb return. Return the book. If you're going to the library, I want you to return this book for me. So I say, I'm going to the library. Would you mind returning this book for me? Okay. Now, I'm going to our English class. I'm going to be late. Tell the teacher. Mm, I don't I don't really know what to add with that sentence. How could, can you give me an example of how you, you would do it? For example, the situation is I'm going to our English class, one person says. So I want you to tell him to tell the teacher that you're going to be late, but in a polite way. Mm. Could you tell the teacher I'm going to be late, please? Yeah. Could you please tell the teacher that I'm going to be late? Okay. Uh, okay. So this has to be like after the could, or can you? No, any. I cannot. Oh, okay. For, for example, can you please? Could you please? Will you please? Would you please? So it, it, okay. the please is just to make it more polite. Yeah, I understand that part. But if I was to put, could you? Could you get me a cup of coffee, please? It's okay. If I put it yeah, it's okay. But normally it sounds better to use it, could you please? Okay, because it's, it, it, it makes it more polite in the sense that it's first, not at the okay. end. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to the kitchen. Okay, so uh, would you mind bringing me a plate, please? Yeah, all right. Okay, okay. Sure. I'm going to London. Um, could you bring me, could you please bring me a souvenir, please? Could you please bring me a what? A souvenir? Ah, yeah, right, of course. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what do you want from, for a souvenir? Um, I don't know, <laughs> anything. <laughs> you know what I would like? A small car. Uh, as what? A small car. Oh, okay. <laughs> or a small bus, you know, the double decker, but you know, in uh, the red buses, I would like that one. Although I have one, but you know, you have to be renewing those things. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the vegetable market. Um, 
can you please bring me some vegetables? All right. I'm going to McDonald's. Will you please bring me a cheeseburger? All right. Okay. Okay. So that's that's one thing. Uh, okay. Let me see now. I have another one. Making requests number two. Yeah. Making polite requests. Says here, complete the request under the pictures with would you like, would you, would you mind, could I, could you, could we, could someone, etc. Do you want or use your own ideas? At please where it's, it's appropriate, okay? For example, this guy is, is uh, getting a taxi and he says, could you please take me to the airport? Not just take me to the airport. It's more polite to use it that way, all right? And here you have other situations, okay? In here, what, describe the image that you see in there. What do you see? It's like an office type of thing, but I'm not really sure what they're doing. It's not an office. Mm. <laughs> I don't really know. It seems uh, to be a hotel. Oh, go. Okay. So two passengers are arriving and uh, you have the receptionist in there. Okay, so for example, which one would you choose? What is appropriate for that? Um, could you, or no, can I, okay. So can I have a room for two, please? Yeah, can I have a room for two, please? Uh, now, use the, the part of the receptionist. Que sería una pieza para dos, without please. Is that the way she's offering? Okay, so do you um, do you want uh -huh. a room for two? Yeah, do you want a roof a room for two? Now let's suppose that this is a kind of weird couple. So the the receptionist doesn't know if they're a marriage couple, married couple, or if they, uh, if they are just passengers. So ask a question with, would you mind? Mm. So he doesn't know if they are a couple. So I'm supposed to ask them if they're married or something? You don't know if they're married. I mean, the, the, the receptionist doesn't know if they're married. So she can ask them, ¿Le mostraría una, una pieza para dos? Okay, so, um, would you mind having a room for two? Right, pretty good. Would you mind having a room for two? Or would, or would you mind having a room for one? <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on in there, right? Okay, now in here we have a, a lady who's uh, presenting something in a meeting. Okay, which one would you choose in there? Mm. Mm. I don't know which one to use. This one. Explain Do you understand the, the way figures uh, I'm guessing she's referring to the picture. Um, figures are numbers. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Could, you you, esas cifras de nuevo, por favor? Could you explain these figures, please? Yeah. Could you explain these figures again, please? All right. Now, these two women, what are they doing? Mm talking and they're gossiping right yeah so i'm hearing some juicy gossip <laughs> yeah okay so so how how uh, could she offer that would you like to hear some juicy gossip yeah would you like to hear some juicy gossip all right okay so here you have some ideas for that you have lots of things for example uh in this case, there's a secretary, right, answering the phone. Which one do you think it's, it would be okay? Mm, let's see. 
get technical assistance maybe sorry uh get technical assistance maybe mm, i think that she's just answering the phone so i would use this one oh leave a message okay let me see that one okay so do you mind leaving a message do you mind leaving a message or could you could you leave a message mm -hmm. all right so that's that's the idea all right okay. um now you can do the other ones at home okay just uh as practice okay all right um and now let's see the last the last exercise is the one that uh this one husband and wife this is a story it says complete the role play using requests could you can you would you would you mind etc and also the two part in brackets okay for example it's a dialogue between the husband and the wife wife and husband okay so it starts here hi honey i'm home so the wife says um do you mind closing the door it's cold yeah so the husband and yeah, yeah. sure but they can't the one too um can you put them out? Can you put them out? And the wife says, number three. Okay, hey, you turn on the radio too loud. Um, would you turn the radio down, please? Yeah, would you turn it down? Would you please turn it down? And the, the husband says, No problem, all the food is in there, it's burning. Um, would you oh no can oh read, this, you... the, read the whole thing no problem okay. no problem oh the food in the oven is burning can you please take it out all right and the woman says oh my god yes quickly and the children's clothes are everywhere on the floor um can you please put them away all right and the man says i'm already on it hey i want to watch the news could you please turn the TV on? Right. And the wife says? I'll do that. Oh, phone. Oh, the phone is ringing. And it seems fun. Um, would you please pick up and see who's calling? Would you please pick it up, I would say. Would oh, you please okay. pick it up and see who's, who's calling? And then the wife says? It's for you. Wow, look outside. It's raining. The clothes are hanging on the line. Um, would you mind bringing them in? Good. And the uh, woman says? Uh, this one, right? Oh, sorry. I'm on the phone. Or... Yeah, uh, on the man? I say, okay, I'll do it myself. And the phone is being hungry. And would you please get off the phone quickly? I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. He was very polite all the way, but in the end, he comes out with a chauvinist com comment, right? <laughs> I'm hungry, you know. You have, to, you have to do it as soon as possible. Okay, that's uh, the way it is, all right? Uh, those are the ways that you have in order to ask for something politely, okay? And with this, we're finishing unit four, and we're going to start working with unit five. Okay, let's see. You can do the other exercises at home. It's a good practice. This is very good. This is a very good one in order to do that. Okay, let's work now with the book. Live four, we're going to start with unit five. Is it? Tiare is coming. Hello, Tiare. Hello. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're going to start with number five, unit number five, travel. Okay. Uh, this is the introduction. Okay, in the image, look at that. Read this, please, uh, Tiare. Tourists take photos of an emperor 
Penguin. Emperor. Of an emperor. Emperor Penguin. On the frozen Amundsen Sea in Antarctica. Sea in Antarctica. Okay, so people go everywhere in the world, okay? Nowadays, things are very, um, very bad for tourism because people are not traveling, at least in Chile. Did you know that in, uh, in the United States, although they have a big number of people who have died, they anyway opened the Disney World in, in Florida. Did you know that? Uh, yes, I saw that in the news. Yeah, so they are not afraid, okay? But in general, people are very afraid. They are not traveling that much, okay? Uh, it says here, look at the photo, discuss the question with your partner. What kind of vacation do you think this is and why? What type of vacation would be this one? I'm guessing it's more to investigate uh, the animals in that area or the penguins in this case. Yeah, it's like a research type of vacation, okay, in which people try to learn things, try to know about uh, some animals. Uh, would you like to take a trip like this, Tiare? Mm, yes, it can be, because I Have want to Have you ever to gone know... to the Antarctic? Have you ever gone to, the, to uh, Punta Arenas or those places in Chile? No. No? I don't. You haven't. Mm -hmm. Do you know the snow? I haven't. Yes. Yeah. When? When did you know it? <laughs> um, when I was a child. <laughs> Where? In here. In. It's very popular. I don't know how. It's... Portillo. Yes. Yeah, in Portillo. So, so you went to you went to the mountains. Okay. Yes. And Kimberly, what about you? You, I know that you were in the states, right? But do you know the snow? Were you in a part in which it snowed? Yeah, I was. So where where were you? In New York. In New York. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what part of New York? Was it a was it in the New York City or in a small town in the? No, in the in like a city in Queens specifically. Sorry, I can't hear you well. Speak up. I said that. I used to live in the city. Ah, in the city. All right. Okay. 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 And here they talk about some uh, things connected to uh, trips or vacations or travel. So it says here, which of these travel experiences have you had? Give each other travel tips about them. For example, being on planes. Um, I know that you, Kimberly, have been on planes. What about you, Thierry? Have you ever been on a plane? No, I haven't. <laughs> haven't. Would you like to do it? Yes. Yes? I hate it. Do you know? I really <laughs> Why? It. Because I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid of heights, you know. When I am on a plane, I feel like so small. Well, I am small anyway. I am short. But... Uh, I feel smaller, you know, in the air is so huge. And then I am especially scared when I am over the ocean, flying over the ocean, because if you fall down there, that's it. Okay. What about you, um, Kimberly? Uh, do you, do you like uh, traveling on planes or not? Uh, yes, I do. I think they are, it's very fun uh, to travel on planes. Really? Yes. <laughs> can you sleep at night, for example? Can you sleep when you are on a plane on a plane at, at night? Uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but I think it's possible. Yes. I have never slept on a plane in my case, personal case. You know, I've traveled many times, but I have never slept on a plane because um, I am really scared of that. You know, the first time that I traveled. Uh, I was an old man. I mean, I, I wasn't a, a young person. I was an old man, 36, not, not old, but you know, I was still young, but I was a man already, but I was really scared. So I, I don't know if I told, if I told you that, but the, in those days yes. they offered, they offered drinks. Did I tell you that or not? 
Yes, you told us. Yeah, okay. And I started drinking and, you know, I drank and I got drunk, but I couldn't sleep anyway. Okay, so for me, it's a, it's a kind of a problem to, to travel. Okay, what about the other ways, the, the other words or things that you have? Uh, short business trips, day trips, delays, lost luggage, planning, around the world trip, taking local buses and trains, traveling for work for a week or more, weekends away. For example, Kimberly, have you ever lost your luggage when you, when you travel? Yes, one time. And what but, happened? Uh, it got, a, they sent it through mail like a week later, but I was re really pissed. Yeah, and where was that? Um, it was actually here. I was coming back from the state, and when we got here, um, we couldn't find our luggage. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Tiare, what is the longest trip that you have done in your life? Uh, when I went to the south of Chile yeah. with my family. Mm -hmm. Did you travel by bus, by car, by, by, by plane? How? No, you said by you haven't traveled by plane. By car. By car. And how long did it take you? And where did you go to? You said to the south, but mm, where? Like a week. And we went to Puerto Montt, eh, Puerto Varas, Concepcion, Licanray, Villarrica. Oh, nice. So you Arte did a nice trip. Life. Did you yes. like it? Yes, it was amazing. Okay. And when you were there, did you take local buses? Did you take trains or things like that in the places that you were? No, because we travel by car. All the time. Ah, we use un transbordador. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, how do you call that? I always forget the ferry. You, so you crossed from Puerto Montt to the, to the island, Chiloé Island, with a ferry or not? Did you do that? No. It was yeah. another place uh, we crossed El Lago Tahuatahua. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, I, I did that on a ferry. I crossed from the uh, continent in Puerto Montt to the island in Chiloé. And then you could put your car and then we continued traveling to the south. I went up to, I, uh, what is the name? Uh, Ancud. I went to Ancud in Chiloé. It's fantastic. Have you ever gone to the south, Kimberly? That far or not? Oh, I don't really know many places here in Chile. Really? You have yes. to do it. I mean, if you go to the south, you're going to be in love with it. Lots of lakes, beautiful views. It's fantastic. It's really fantastic. You know, I've done long trips, for example, to the north of Chile. I lived in Iquique when I was studying one year. So I used to take the bus. It was 28 hours traveling to the north. And to the south, I went by car. And then in, in there, in Puerto Montt, I crossed with the ferry. So it's, um, I know a little bit of, uh, of uh, Chile. And then once I went to the south, I mean to Punta Arenas. In that case, we were working in a project for the university. And I went with Miss Cecilia Arrera. We went there and we stayed in a, in a hotel there. It was a lot of fun. I love Punta Arenas. Punta Arenas is a small town. I mean, it's not big, but it's very clean. I love that. It's so clean, so, uh, you know, cozy, and the houses are beautiful. I loved Punta Arenas. The same as I loved Puerto Varas or Puerto Montt. Those places are fantastic. Okay, and Kimberly, what is the farthest that you have been apart from the United States? Do you know any other countries? Uh, yes, I was once in Canada. In Canada. What places in Canada? In Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, I was in Toronto too, once with Miss Padia, with Miss Cecilia. We went, uh, we went to Toronto for a, for a month. Pretty cold. Okay. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, it's really cold in Toronto. 
And Tiare, what is the place that you would like to visit? If, if you had the money now, where would you like to go? Um, first to USA and USA? Canada. Yes, USA? USA. Yeah. And Canada. And any other place? Um, Australia, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. USA is, is pretty. But you know, I think that the if I if I could travel, I have traveled to to some places. But I think that Europe is fantastic. I mean, the architecture is so beautiful, and it's so much. There's so much history in Europe, more than in the United States. In the United States, probably the part that I would like to go is the place where near where. Kimberly was. She was in New York, New York, right? So in those to the to the um, East Coast, there is a lot of history there because there where where the pilgrims came. So uh, there is a there is a lot of history there. But in the place where I was in the Midwest, mm, I didn't I didn't like it very much. Lots of Indian reservations which are historical, but the rest. It's like pretty squared. I don't know. Did you like the United States, Kimberly? Um, I think it's pretty to visit, but not to live there. So I prefer other places, I, I guess. How long did you live in the States? For like seven years or eight years. Oh, it's a long. How old were you when you, when you arrived in the States? I was like seven. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, I, I went when I was 36, so. <laughs> but it, it's nice to know a little bit of, I think that, what do you think about traveling? What do you think about traveling, Tiare? Do you like traveling? Yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you, Kimberly? Uh, yes, I think it's a really fun experience. Okay. What is the good thing about knowing other places or traveling for you? You have had that experience, Kimberly. You have gone to other places. And uh, what I was the, the thing that you appreciate the most about, uh, about going to the States, for example? Uh, learning about different cultures and getting to experience new things. And yeah, the places are very different from where I live or like here. So I think it's really cool to see how different it is. They say that when you go to another place, you have a cultural shock, right? How was it for you? Did you, did you have a cultural shock when you arrived in the States or was it, was it worse when you came back to Chile? Uh, what do you mean by that word though? Cultural mm -hmm. shock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when you, you have a cultural shock because you know we behave in a different way. For example, in here in Chile, we are very, close people, we like to embrace others, we have to kiss each other, uh, we like to be very close. But when you go to the States, they are so totally different. They keep a distance, you know, that would be okay now. But in the past, we used to be very close. And uh, we used to visit each other, you know, our families, and uh, the way we eat. So everything is different for you. So you have like a cultural shock it, at the beginning, right? Uh, then you get used to it, but now you have like two cultural shocks. I imagine when you first arrived in the States, but you lived seven years there and then you came back to Chile. So I imagine that when you came back to Chile, you had a, you had also a cultural shock. Is it like yes. That? yes, it was kind of hard to get used to, but uh, in the sense of school, basically, because all the uh, subjects were kind of different and they were thought uh, a different way. So, yeah, I think that's the only thing <laughs> that it was like different. What about uh, the, the, the Americans and, and Chileans? Do you think, I, in my case, for example, I was an adult person. So uh, I realized that we were different. But for you, when you arrived in the States for the first time, you were like seven years, you said? Did you mm -hmm. see any yep. difference? between Americans and Chileans? Uh, yes, of course. But in New York, there's also like a lot of uh, Latin Americans and just a lot of cultures. 
So it's just a little bit of everything I feel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's a uh, it's a lot of it's kind of difficult. But anyway, knowing other cultures, knowing other people, knowing other countries is pretty interesting. I think that when you spend money on traveling, it's money that is well spent. Yeah, because it's always uh, growing for you. You grow when you visit other places. You grow when you know about other cultures. So it's a, it's a good and a nice experience, okay? Um, okay, so now we're going to learn a little bit of, um, uh, we're going to learn um, vocabulary related to traveling. Instead of, uh, before going into the, um, into the, the book itself, okay? This is the introduction, but I want you to see this, air travel. And here you have some vocabulary. Uh, lectura. Oops. Yeah. You're going to start reading. First of all, uh, departure. Do you understand the word departure? Mm, no. When you depart, is when you start your trip to another place. So you depart. That is a departure, the beginning of the trip. All right? Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the verb is to depart. You depart. And the noun is departure, right? Okay, so start reading about okay. the departure. Read, please, uh, the attic. Departures. When you arrive at the airport. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It's, it's not departure. It's departure. 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 Yeah. Departure. departure. Yeah, okay. Departure. When you arrive at the airport, you can look at the airport. departure. Remember, remember, I'm going to be correcting you a little bit. Uh, remember that when you have a vowel here and a vowel here, the pronunciation of the is the. The. So when you arrive at the airport. Okay. Yeah. When you arrive at the, at the. the airport, you can look at the at the departure bar, which show the flight numbers. Example BA735. Departure times example zero A40. No, and destinations. Okay, Eight forty. That is the departure uh, time. So whenever you go at the at the airport, you have to look at those screens, big screens, and in there you have all the information about your flight. Okay. For example, the flight number could be BA seven three five. Departure time eight forty. And okay. continue. And destination example Venice. At the check-in desk, okay. they wave. Wait, this is the check-in desk. When you have to check in, okay, that is the check-in desk. Continue. They wave your, I don't know how to. Yeah, they weigh in here. Mm -hmm. They're weighing. They know the number of kilos that you have in your luggage. This is your luggage. Luggage. Okay. Your bags and your suitcases all the contact, all the, I mean, all the, the number of uh, suitcases that you have is your luggage. Okay, mm -hmm. for example, you can have three, I don't know, three um, bags and one suitcase, for example. And that is your luggage, right? Mm, yes. Usually? Usually you can take about 20 kilos if it is more, you may have to pay excess baggage. Baggage. Luggage and baggage are synonyms. Luggage and baggage. Baggage. Okay. They are synonyms. It's equipaje. Okay? So usually you can take about 20 kilos. If you have yes. more than that, you have to pay excess luggage. So you pay for that. And usually it's sometimes very expensive what you pay for the extra luggage, 
Okay, continue, Tiare. They also shake your ticket and give you a boarding card for the plane with your seat number on it. Then you go through passport control where an official checks your passport and into the, de into the departure lounge. Here you can also buy things in the duty free. Example, perfume, perfume, perfume or alcohol. Alcohol, that's what you say. Alcohol. Okay. That, that I have, ah, okay. Okay, so this is kind of the idea. Whenever you are, before departing, so you go to the, to the checking counter, all right? And first of all, you have to check the, uh, the number of flight that you have, the, um, the, the time or the departure time. And then you go to the check-in desk and then you weigh your luggage. See that you don't have extra, extra weight. And then they give you a boarding card and you go through custom office, okay? And in there, you are in the departure, departure lounge where you can, where is the duty free and where you can buy things in there. But duty free is pretty expensive. I think that uh, it's not very common to find good things in there. There are very nice products from the country, but they are, they charge you a lot of money in there. Have you ever bought in the duty free, in a duty free Kimberly? Uh, no, it's very expensive, like you said. <laughs> yeah, it's very expensive. For example, sometimes you have whiskey. I love whiskey, you know. I love uh, to drink a, a glass of whiskey, scotch, I mean. But whenever I have been in a duty free, the whiskey is three times the price in, in Chile. And if you want to take a bottle of wine to take to your, to, to a family there, they, you have to pay extra, very, very high, you know, because they charge you a lot in there, okay? Okay, continue reading, uh, Kimberly, please. Um, I think it is in, we're in here, about half an hour before. Here, Kimberly? Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, about half an hour before, uh, let's see. Take off, you go to a gate number. Okay, for example, explain what take off is. Take off, uh, when you, when the plane takes off? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, that it's, uh, you have the departure, but you get on the plane and then the plane take off. That is to take off, right? Okay. So you go to a gate number. Okay, continue. For example, gate 14, where you wait before you get on the plane. When you board, um, get on the plane, you find your seat. If you, have, if you have hand luggage, you can put it under your seat or in the overhead locker above your seat. If there are no delays, when you have to wait until a later time for some reason, the plane moves towards the runway, the area where the plane planes take off and land all right okay um, so let's put it a little bit later okay so you go to the gate number so when you pass that you get to the when you pass the custom then they check your your boarding passage or the boarding pack card and then you go into the um, the place um the gate number okay so for example gate 14 gate 15 and then you go there and then you have to wait in there to board the plane, yeah? When, to get on the plane. When you board, you have to lose to look for your seat. And if you have hand luggage, uh, they usually call that hand luggage a carry-on. A carry-on, something that you take with you in your hand. Because most of your luggage go inside the plane. But usually you take something with you. I mean, for example, in the case of women, they take their, I don't know, their things to um, make up, for example, things like that, or pills that you need, anything that you take in your hands. And those things is called a carry-on, okay? And then when you have a carry-on, if it is a small thing, you can put it in the overhead compartment 
or in here the overhead locker, they call it. It's something where you put the things on over you. Yeah. Um, and then you you take the plane. Okay, the plane. Sorry. Continue here, uh, Kimberly. Delay. Okay. Uh, delay can be used as a noun and a verb. It is common. It is a common word at the airports. There's a two-hour delay on our flight. Why is the flight delayed? What's the reason for the delay? We were delayed at Athens Airport. Okay. Kimberly, sorry. Uh, ah, Tiare, do you understand the word delay? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. So you can use it as a noun and as a verb, okay? It's very typical that when you travel by plane, there are delays, okay? It's not, it's not easy to go immediately, yeah? Okay, uh, let's go into the flight, okay? Read that, please, uh, Tiare. The captain. The captain, the pilot, or coming oh, crew. The captain, you say captain, not captain, captain, and the pilot. Read that captain, again. pilot. Yeah. Or cabin crew, people who look after passengers, may see these things. May say these things. Please, fasten your seat belt and put your seat in the up, upright position. All right. This is the upright position in here. This is the upright mm -hmm. position. When you are on a plane, the rest of the day, when you, you start flying, you usually put your seat back in order to sleep a little bit better, okay? So you put this, you move this to the back in order to be, you know, in a more horizontal way, okay? And the seat belt is the thing that you put in here. So you have to fasten your seat belt. Mm. Fasten means abrochar. Fasten your seat belt. So you put your seat belt in the well in the, on planes. I think they have it like on the here. They don't have here. They have it. The seat belt is in here on your waist. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, go on uh, reading, please, Tiare. May we remind passengers? To passengers, please remember that there is no smoking now until you are inside the terminal building, the part of the airport. Airport. Air. Airport. Where passengers arrive and depart. The cabin crew are now coming around, coming around with landing cars. Cars you have to fill in when you enter certain countries. Certain countries. Yeah, these landing cards are very important, okay? You have to fill it, fill them in, and uh, in there you put all your, I mean, your name, your last name, and the reason why you are visiting the other country, okay? So you have to do that every time you fly to another, you fly to another country. Uh, once I had a problem with that, because I didn't complete that card in a good way. I just put Ricardo Nunez and the S for my second last name. And unfortunately for me, when I arrived in the States, I was caught by the police because there was a person called Ricardo Nunez S in the United States who was a drug dealer or something like that. Okay. So I was detained by the police for like, one hour and uh, they were, you know, investigating me, thinking that I could be that person, okay? So at the beginning, I was sitting in there, waiting, waiting, nobody talked to me. The police took me when I, when I, when I was passing my, my ticket, entering uh, to Miami, I think it was. And then the, the guy who was, you know, talking to me at the moment, Suddenly he saw something on, this, on the screen and he called the police. And the police called me and then he said, he asked me if I spoke English. I said, yes. Okay, follow me. 
and then he took me to a to an office i was i mean then i sat in there and there were two guys you know one of them was looking into a computer he never talked to me he never looked at me even you know he was talking i mean he was you know writing something and i was waiting and i was waiting 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 like 20 minutes 25 minutes and asked the guy what was going on i was really nervous and the guy didn't answer me didn't look at me he was a black guy i remember and then finally like after 35 or 40 minutes he said to the other guy he said hey he he doesn't he's not related to this guy and then he called me and he asked me why uh, I had put, I mean, you, you, do you have another last name, he said? Because you, you have two last names. Yes, I said, what is your second last name? I said, so are you. And why didn't you write that? Because you, you put only yes. Yeah, but I didn't think it was important, I said. But the guy said, no, you have to be careful. So whenever you come to the United States, you have to put both your first name and your two second last names because that can can help you in these cases. I was really, really scared at that moment, okay? So this landing card is very, very important, okay? Uh, uh, Tiare, read this part now, the cabin crew. The cabin crew are both men, stewards and women, stewardesses. They are, they are also called flight attendants flight attendants and also they're called flight host or hostess yeah so you have three names for those people steward in the case of a man a stewardess in the case if if it is a woman you can also say a flight attendant for both and also host for if it is a man hostess if it is a woman okay um I know that there is a, for women, it's also, or for girls, it's kind of a dream to become a hostess, right? Have you ever thought about that, Kimberly? When you were like, uh, no, you can, you can be a hostess still. Uh, when I was younger, but not now. <laughs> Why not? Because it's not my thing. It's not what I like. I like teaching. <laughs> okay. But it's a nice uh, way to start, right? Because you can you can travel a lot, you can uh, speak and use your language, okay? Uh, so it's but it's kind of I would say it's not nice in the sense that you have to be serving, and you have to be like uh, very respectful. Would you like to be a a hostess, Tiare, or a stewardess? Hmm. Uh, before, yes, but now, no. Why not? Because I want to be a teacher of English and yeah. travel. Yeah, okay, good. Now, let's continue. Um, Kimberly, now you are going to be, or to read Arrival. Please read Arrival. Okay, Arrival. When the plane lands, arrives on the ground, you have to wait for it to stop. When the doors are open, you get off the plane and walk through the terminal building and to and go to the baggage reclaim place where you collect your luggage uh, you go through customs green um, nothing to declare red goods to declare at most airports you can hire a car rent a car okay um, what things can be um, what things have to be declared have to be declared uh, um, really. weapons what things do you think do you know any for example if you if you bring a computer from another country you have to declare it okay well nowadays it's not but if you have like two or three then you have to declare that before wait, before going through customs yeah you have to declare that if you have like uh, these type of products you have to declare them okay uh, but if you have if you bring only clothes or some souvenirs you don't have to declare that okay um 
Now, please, uh, Kimberly, read this. The note here. Note. You hire something for a short period and rent something for a long period. For example, a flat. For a car, you can use both. Okay, you can a hire flat an or apartment. you can rent a car. Both are correct. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. A flat meaning an apartment? Yes, yeah, flat is an apartment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, kind of the uh, vocabulary that you use when you get to, uh, to the airport and you want to fly, all right? And there is a lot of things that you have to know. The crew is the people who work in the, on the plane, including the pilots and the stewardesses or the hostesses, the hostess. And um, well, you are a passenger. Uh, what else? You have the terminal building, the, the luggage claim or the baggage claim. Sometimes you can say reclaim or claim. Okay, it's where you can see your luggage. And that is very sometimes kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a nervous time because when you have to take another plane, you have to wait for your luggage and sometimes the luggage doesn't come immediately. So you have to be waiting and waiting and waiting. And if the luggage doesn't come, then you have to take the other plane and then you lose your luggage. Then it's going to be sent to you in another time, which is obviously very annoying for you, right? It's going to be very annoying because you need it. You need your, your, your luggage, you need your suitcases. Once I lost, well, it, it's not me, but my daughter, we went to Brazil and uh, her luggage was lost. Instead of receiving the luggage when we arrived in uh, Canas Vieiras, I think it was the place where we went, in a small, small town in, in Brazil, and her luggage was sent to Lima, Peru. So she was taking her things, her clothes, and also my grandson's clothes. And it was uh, terrible because in, in, uh, in Brazil, in that part, it was summer. So we sweat a lot. We sweated a lot. Uh, it was terrible. And then you have to change your clothes. So I had to buy, because I think that the, the luggage was, was returned like one week later. So the first week, my, my daughter and my grandson didn't have any clothes, so we had to buy clothes, like light clothes, in order to change every day. Oh, it's raining. Ah, it's raining. Can you hear not? I can't hear. It's raining I'm gonna in, your, in your place. <laughs> no, perfect. No. No, come on. It's raining. <laughs> now it's like watching the, the snow when you when you see raining. The other day it was raining. I, I take my father to see the rain. Incredible, incredible, because in the past it was normal to, to see the rain. Nowadays it's kind of very strange to see the rain. Okay, girls, uh, so this is the, you have to read this again because there is a lot of vocabulary um, in here. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to upload it. And also I'm going to upload the exercises page for you to do, okay, to do the exercises. Uh, for Wednesday, we're going to, we're going to check this, all this vocabulary, all right? And uh, try to, to learn it because it's, it's a lot, okay? Any okay. questions so far? Uh, no. You? No, is it clear? Everything is clear? Yes. Yeah, okay, so that would be all for today. Uh, I know that you have classes with Miss Patty. And uh, sí. so I, I leave them now. Okay. Okay, okay Profe, nos pray. vemos. Adiós. Sorry. Adiós. Yeah. Ah, one thing more. On Wednesday, it is, it is supposed to rain, and it, it is supposed to rain hard. Hard. I hope you come to my class. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, but ah, but on, on Wednesday it's a little bit later. Okay, eleven thirty. <laughs> so you have more time to recover from the rain. <laughs> okay, see you then girls. Bye bye. See you. Bye, mister. <laughs>